The first thing I want to talk about, yesterday when I referred to St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, and uh, we got to verse 34, and I read to you what the Bible said. Now, look at it again. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other left, shall be left. I got uh, a couple of questions. Some people wanted to know. <laughs> because I said that um, this definitely refers to homosexuals because it's a sign of the end time. And so they said, uh, so uh, do you mean out of the two homosexuals, one go to heaven and the other one left? <laughs> well, um, of course, the same word that's translated bed here is sometimes uh, red couch. It could mean uh, two are sitting on the couch, all right? But actually, it is mostly translated bed. So uh, this King James version of it is accurate. But here's what you've got to know. I did explain this to you earlier on, last year, months ago, when I was dealing with the second coming of Christ. The, one of the problems a lot of people have is they don't really know the differences between when the word is talking about the second coming of Christ and when it's referring to the rapture of the church. And um, the words that Jesus spoke concerning Israel and the kingdom of God that's coming to Israel, the kingdom of God that's coming to this earth, to be set up in this earth, to be run from Jerusalem, they don't know when Jesus is referring to that and when Jesus is referring to the church. This scripture has nothing to do with the church. It's, got no, it's all about the second coming. And um, you have to remember, the second coming has judgment with it first. And then he sets up the kingdom. But I, I've got to give it to you in the context. When you study the Bible, um, one of the rules of studying scripture is what we call contextual analysis. In other words, you've got to study it in the context of its presentation. You have to understand the language in which it is delivered. And also, you've got to relate it with other verses that say exactly the same thing or something that's related to it. So let me quickly take you into that scripture again. We're going to read from verse number 26, chapter 17 in Luke's Gospel. Look at it now. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. And I did explain that to you. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came. Now watch, look at it. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Okay, next verse. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Did you notice that on both occasions, he's talking about judgment. He's talking about judgment. And then he tells us those who were delivered. Okay, now... Uh, Noah, by the ark, and then Lot, who was taken by the angel out of Sodom. Okay, next verse. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Remember, he's talking about his second coming. Let's move to the next verse. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop, and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lord's wife. Okay, now, um, to understand what he's saying, I want to read the same thing to you from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24. Let's read from verse 36 into 38 and a little more than that. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, 
No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So evidently, we are reading the same subject. Okay? This has to do with the synoptic gospels. All right? But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. This is his coming. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came, and notice what it says, and took them all away. The flood came and took them all away. Now, in St. Luke's Gospel, it says, and destroyed them all. So he says, took them all away. Luke says, destroyed them all. So they were taken away for destruction. All right, next verse. Then shall two be in the field. So you see he's referring to the same thing. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Remember, the flood took them all away. This time, the flood, the, the took, okay? The took is about one person in the field while the other is left. I'm just trying to put you in context. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Now go back again to verse 38. Let's read. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Contextual analysis, remember. And took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Next. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, as he took them all away by the flood. This time the one shall be taken, and the other left. Taken by what? Destruction. What happens to the other one that's left? Good. You see, in the days that were before the flood, the message was, you can only be saved by... The ark. So believe the message of Noah. Get into the ark and you shall be saved. But anybody who is not inside the ark will be destroyed. That was the message of that day. The message that Jesus brings this time, he says, some of you will be carried away. Are you following this? Now some of you will be carried away into all nations. And then they'll be scattered into all nations, but there'll be a remnant. This will be before Jesus comes back. So remember, on certain occasions when Israel was taken out of their land, some people were left behind. He said, you're going to be carried into all nations. But then there were some that were left behind. Those that were left behind were not better than those who were taken away. It was the same judgment. They weren't left behind because they were better. They were a remnant for the testing. And so, in the second coming of Christ, there are those who will be destroyed instantly, and the others have a chance to call upon him for salvation, because now he shows up and everyone is repentant. Can you see it? So in the same way that he let some be carried away into other nations in the past, and others were left in the land. Not because one was better than the other. Now, he comes back, and some are taken for destruction. Others are fleeing here and there. And remember, here's another thing. Because they asked him, when will this be, or where is this? He said, at the Armageddon. How? By telling them it's going to be at the time that there will be a party for the birds. When will there be a party for the birds? At the Armageddon. When he says the cause for party, I read that to you last night. And then he says the great men, the captains of armies and so on, they're going to be destroyed during that time. But prior to that, remember, there was going to be a flight where they're escaping because the Antichrist has moved into Jerusalem. And there's a spirit behind Behind it all, remember that? The Bible tells us Michael and his angel fought against Satan and his demons. And they were sent down. 
and they realized that the time was short. How long did they have? Three and a half years from the middle of Daniel's 70th week. From then to the end, it's three and a half years. Okay? So they try to escape. The Antichrist moves in, seizes Jerusalem. He's got three and a half years for all his work. At the end of those three and a half years, Jesus comes back and judges the nations, including Israel, but then he brings deliverance to Israel. So those who are the remnants at that time, remember, Israel at that period is not serving God. They're not serving God at that time. But now, Jesus comes back and they call for help because the whole world is against Israel. Their land is being taken. So the point I'm making is, when you read in St. Luke's Gospel and St. Matthew's Gospel where it says one shall be taken, the other left, it's not referring to the rapture at all. It's about destruction. It's about the judgment. So if you have two in a bed and um, you're thinking one's going to go to heaven, no, that's not a rapture. That is the second coming of Christ. And the second coming of Christ is all about judgment. He does the judgment, the judgment of the nations. He's got judgment of the nations. You have the goat nations and the sheep nations. After he's done with that, he starts up the millennial reign for 1,000 years. So he cleanses everything first through the purifications before he starts his government. Praise God. So you tell somebody who was thinking, well, you know, you can do that thing and then check out with Jesus, doesn't mind. Say, not so fast. Here's what the word says. <laughs> Hallelujah. 